In this sponsored tutorial, we're going to check out the FS Poster plugin. This plugin allows you to automate the social sharing of content on your website. You can even use this to share to your clients' accounts. So if you have a bunch of clients that want to post to their various social networks, you can automate that as well and provide that as a service to them. You can post to an unlimited number of accounts under the 13 different social networks that you're going to see in this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below this video. I try to answer them the best I can. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. If you've not done so yet, make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell. And as with all my sponsored videos, I'm going to walk you through how this works so you can make a better buying decision and see if this fits into your business. So let's get started right now. The first thing we want to do is install the plugin. So let's go to plugins and then add new and upload plugin, choose file. And we're gonna choose the plugin file that we downloaded from Code Canyon. This one right here, FS poster. Yours might have something else at the end. This is the one that I have. Depending when you watch this video, the file name might change. Click on activate plugin. And then when we click on FS poster in the bottom corner here, we are taken to a place where we enter our purchase key and purchase information. So I'm gonna add my data in here and the email address would be the email address that you used to buy the product from Code Canyon. From here, choose an option. Choose an option that's accurate because that helps the developer figure out what part of the marketing works and what doesn't. I'm going to choose repeat customer from mine and then click on activate. And then we end up on the dashboard where it shows a summary of our activity. We just installed the plugin, so there's nothing here. But when there is data here, we'll see how many times posts have been shared, how many clicks we received, the total number of accounts we've linked to, as in social accounts that we own that we're sharing to, how many we have of those, how many clicks from scheduled posts. And then we have some graphs that'll be down here, comparisons by network, comparing number of clicks for each social network, comparing the number of clicks for each account stuff like that. So the first thing we want to do before we can get started is add our social accounts. I recommend you start in the apps tab. This is where you manage the connection to social networks. FS poster has a standard connection, a standard connection method for each of these that you see listed here. You can use their method or create your own. For example, if we go to Facebook, let's click on there and we see here the FS poster standard app and the API ID or the app ID and the app key. This is created by social poster for you to use right out of the box. But everybody else who uses social poster is also using this. So you may not want to use this, but you can. Twitter has the FS poster standard set up. LinkedIn has it. All these numbers that are one, they all have it. Pinterest does not. You have to create your own for Pinterest. If you want to create your own, you click into the one you want to create. So if you want to create one for Pinterest, you click on add an app and you'd fill out this form. You add the app ID and the app secret key and then that will create the app connection for Pinterest. For each of these social networks, it'll be different, creating the, the actual apps for it. But if you were to Google, for example, Pinterest API app, and then go to the Pinterest API is probably a good one, or API Pinterest. And here, it'll explain how to create the app for Pinterest. If you do a similar search for any one of these services, you will see how you can create an app for them. In this video, we're not going to create the actual apps. I'm just going to show you how to use FS Poster because we already have the standard apps from FS Poster for a lot of these. Once you have apps added, we go to accounts. And this is where we add actual Facebook accounts. So in the apps tab, we're connecting to the social network as a whole. On the accounts tab, we're connecting to our specific account or specific pages on the social network. So we'll add our specific Facebook pages on this page right here. And this is not shared by others. So on the apps tab, that connection, that FS poster has auto filled, that is shared among FS poster accounts that use that connection. The accounts we create here, those are just for us. Those aren't shared with other accounts. Nobody else knows about them. It's just you in this site and any other admins who have access to the site will be able to see the account connections that are made here. So to add an account, pick any social network, click on add account or add an account. You can choose the app method or the cookie method. I'm gonna choose the app method in this case. You can use a proxy if you want, which means you post from different IPs. And that means that Facebook won't see you as posting too much, even if you do post too much. You can set FS Poster up to post your blog posts and whatever posts you create in the scheduler every minute to 15 different Facebook accounts. Facebook would shut that down really quickly if that was all coming from the same IP. So if you're doing mass posting, 
you definitely want to look into using a proxy because then it looks like it's coming from different places. It doesn't look like it's just coming from one website. So proxies are definitely key if you're doing a lot of posting. If you are posting one or two blog posts a week or even one a day and then posting that to all your social networks, that's not a big deal. I'm talking about mass posting, like multiple times an hour to a bunch of different accounts on the same network, then you want to use proxies. So I'm going to turn this one off. If you have created other apps on the apps tab, you can choose the app right here. This one is specific for Facebook because we're adding a Facebook account. So if you were to add other Facebook apps on the apps tab, they'd be listed here as well. Click on add, then we'll log into our Facebook account, continue as Bjorn, click OK. All the routine Facebook authorizations and our account has been successfully added. Let's close that. Now we see all of our accounts listed here. These are all the accounts connected to my Facebook page or my, my Facebook account, sorry. And it's not just pages that are listed here, even groups. WP Learning Lab, the group is listed right here. And if you haven't joined the Facebook group yet, make sure you do. There's a link in the description down below to go check it out. And we're just in there talking shop about WordPress, helping each other with WordPress problems. It's a great little community. Make sure you come and check it out. So we can post to a group by clicking this little checkbox and then click on activate. I don't want to post to the group, so I'm going to deactivate. You can also activate based on a condition. And here we can choose which category, which custom post type, which page type, which media type we want to post or want to share to this social network. And when you click on them, it adds them in here. We can add another one. Let's add string instruments. So we have these two categories that we're posting from. This is a WooCommerce category right here, and this is a regular blog category. And we can choose to share posts from only those categories and those tags, or we can choose to not share posts from those categories and tags. And so you can conditionally share using that option. That is the activate condition. I'm going to share to the WP Learning Lab Facebook page. I'm going to activate that. So we're sharing everything. And now we have a Facebook account connected. And the process is really similar for all the rest. Go to Twitter, add account, select the app. This is the FS Poster app. We didn't create our own. Click Get Access, click on Authorize App, and boom, connection successful. We now have the Twitter app. I'm going to choose Activate, and now we have two accounts set up, Facebook and Twitter. All the rest are just as easy, and you can have unlimited accounts connected. So under Twitter, you can have 300 Twitter accounts connected here. Not that you want to, I'm just saying it's possible. Facebook. Same thing, you can have 300 different Facebook pages or Facebook groups or whatever it is. You can connect lots and lots. So now that we're connected, we can actually share. And there's a bunch of different ways that we can share. Probably the most common one is going to be the schedule because we wanna share things on social media at a regular interval because social media is like drinking from a fire hose. If you don't post at least every day, your posts are so far down your audience's newsfeed, they're not gonna see them. So scheduling posts is, in my opinion, always the best way to go. We can create a schedule by clicking on this plus schedule button. And let's just call this uh, post sharing schedule. Start time, we'll leave it as today and at the current time. And I wanna post, let's see every hour, because that's a good time interval. You can also post every minute. You can post every one minute. You can also post every day, up to 50 days. And the minutes is also up to 50 minutes, and you can post every one through 50 hours. I'm gonna choose once an hour. I'm not gonna set a sleep timer, because my audience is worldwide, but if you know that your audience was in a specific location, you can turn this on and just have it post between certain times. So maybe you wanna post just at Let's see, right now, to 12 hours from now. So it posts only during this time interval and not at nighttime in this case. Then we can select how the posts are chosen. You can choose randomly without duplicates. You can choose randomly, old posts first, new posts first. If you want to have a recurring schedule that goes on forever, you want to choose either randomly, old posts first, new posts first. Because randomly without duplicates, eventually once you get through all of them, through all your posts, it's not going to post anymore because that would then be a duplicate. So unless you have 10,000 posts, you're not gonna wanna choose this one because then you're limiting the length of your schedule. So if you wanna have the schedule go on forever, choose one of these other options. They're equally good, I think. I'd probably choose randomly, but the other ones are just as good as well. So I'm gonna choose randomly. And here we can choose not to post products that are out of stock. So if you have WooCommerce installed and you're posting about products, this could be a great option so you're not posting things that currently can't be bought. 
I'm not posting WooCommerce, so I'm gonna unselect that. And at the very bottom, it shows that there are currently three posts matching my filters. And currently, I have only three posts on this website, so that is accurate. Let's go to filters. For the first drop down, we can choose the recency of posts you wanna share. If you're constantly adding new posts to your site, then any of these options would do. If you have, say, 100 posts, and you're not doing any more right now, but you wanna republish all of them indefinitely, you might wanna choose all times. But you can also choose just to share posts from this week, the previous week, this month, previous month, this year, last 30 days, the last 60 days, and it'll publish you just posts that are published in that time frame. You can choose by post type. I'm gonna keep mine as post. If you choose product, you're probably gonna to wanna to choose don't post products that are out of stock down here. Let's keep that in mind if you're choosing the product post type, which is WooCommerce products. You can post by category and tag. They're all listed right here. We see our product categories, string instruments, and our post categories. I'm just gonna leave it as all. You can also choose specific IDs, no post only posts with those IDs. Under accounts, we choose which accounts to publish to. Currently we have two accounts on our site, Twitter and Facebook. You can click the X to remove them. If you remove one, click on add, and we can add it back in. So let's choose our Facebook page. There we go, successfully added to list. And now it's back on there. You can also filter so you can see which accounts specifically under which social networks are being posted to because you might have a big list because like I said, you can have unlimited accounts on these social networks. There's these 13, but it's unlimited. There's also WordPress, which means you can publish your posts to other WordPress sites in your network if you wanted to. So I'm going to keep it as these two. I'm gonna click on add schedule. And you know what, I missed a tab. So I'm gonna go back to edit and I'm going to look at custom messages. This is the message that is sent. So currently, the title of the post is sent. You also have all these variables that you can add, and that will add information to your post. So I'm gonna choose title, and I think I will choose excerpt. So we're gonna post our title and excerpt. Then I'll click on Save Schedule. And the featured image should be auto-shared. You don't have to add it in there. There's no option to add featured image. There's a featured image URL, which you see right here but that is not the actual featured image, that's the link to the featured image. The featured image should be auto-shared. So now we have our schedule active. We can pause this schedule by clicking on pause. We can start it again by clicking on start. So if you have special promotions throughout the year, you can set up your sharing schedule that you wanna run during that part of the year. Then you use pause and unpause when it's the right time. We can also direct share. Direct share allows us to post something right now. So if we just add an image here, Let's go and add, let's see, this guy writing on a piece of paper. That's great. There's our image and here's our message. Look at this. Then we choose where to post it to. We have Twitter and Facebook on the right. I'm gonna click on share now. We can also schedule it if we want to or save the post for later. I'm gonna click on share now. Then we're gonna go to Facebook and Twitter and see how it looks. Here we go, we're posting. Twitter's already posted, Facebook is now posted. Let's open those two accounts and see how it looks. So let's go to Facebook. And here's Facebook one minute ago, even though it was just a few seconds ago, but there's our post. I can click on the image. I should have added a link to it. I did not do that. I'll like it though, because I like that. On Twitter, we have it right here. I'll heart that. And there's our two posts on those social networks. So that is a direct share. And the scheduled share, the post would appear just like this, only on the schedule that you set and with the content that you create in the custom message. Let's go to dashboard. Let's see if we have any data now that we shared that. Now we have two shares this month on two total accounts. I don't have any clicks because I didn't add a link. Should have added a link, my bad. But we have a little bit of data going on here and there's more ways to share. If we go to posts, for example, on the right hand side, we have the share icon and the schedule icon. If we click on share, we just pick our social networks, choose share in the background if we want, and then click on share. Share in the background means that pop-up's not gonna happen. You can carry on doing whatever you were doing and it'll just share in the background. And we can also schedule right from here. And this is the same schedule setup that we saw earlier, but it has some autofill information. It has the specific post that we selected the share on. It has specific filters as in a specific ID because it's just this post. And you can choose your social networks and then create your custom message. And then it'll share just this post on whatever schedule you set. If we click into 
edit on any of these posts, we have similar options down here in the FS poster widget, share and schedule. They work the same way they do in the post list. It's just that here we have the buttons on the post editor. And let's go to products under WooCommerce. We see our product list and we see our familiar share and schedule buttons. If we go to edit the product, we'll see them as well here at the very top, share and schedule. And that's how we can use FS Poster to share. Those are all the ways we can share with FS Poster. And there's also more settings. So if we go into the settings tab, we can set very specifically how we want each function to work. There's the publish settings in general for everything that's published. There's general settings, which applies to everything as well. URL settings applies to everything. And then we have specific settings for each social network. Facebook settings, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, you get the idea. So each social network and the WordPress sites also have their own settings that you can adjust in here. And the last thing is logs. This shows all the activity that FS Poster has done. And right now we have these two shares and it even registers that we got a like on Twitter right here. It's not registering the Facebook like, maybe that'll show up later, but it'll show hits as in views, likes, comments, and shares for each post, which is pretty slick. So if you wanna automate your social sharing, I encourage you to check out FS Poster on Code Canyon. It's $45. If you share a lot on social media or if you want to automate your sharing, it's a pretty inexpensive price for how much it can automate for you. And it's five out of five stars, the rating. Average rating is 4.96, which is pretty awesome. And they keep adding more features. This is something you want to see in any product that you use because you, you want to use it long term. You want to have it part of your business. And FS Poster, for the past two years, have released 125 versions with 150 new features in the past two years. They just passed their two year anniversary and they keep updating it. They keep working on it, keep making it better, which is something you want to see. And a great use case for FS Poster is you creating a service where you post for your clients. For example, if you have a client that posts to all their social networks, just one account in each one, let's say there's 10 of them and they just copy and paste and they go into each one and they post it. It's very tedious and maybe they do it every day or every week, or maybe they like to do it more than they do because it's a pain. You can use FS Poster, sell them a service where you say you will do this for them for a certain amount of dollars per month. And you just log in here, you go to direct share, and you can direct share to their social media accounts. You can add their social media accounts to FS Poster. Just make sure you select the right ones in your list here of all your accounts. But you can have multiple different clients listed in here. You can share to their specific accounts their specific posts and make it really easy for yourself because you can just mass publish to all of them or you could even set this up on your client's website and they can do it, which will save them a whole lot of time by just creating one post and sharing it to all 10 networks. That's a great use case for FS Poster. If you're not automating your own websites, it's definitely something you can add as a value add for your paying customers or even have as another service you provide and get paid for it as another income stream. And next up, watch this video up here where I show you why and how to secure WordPress websites. This is another service you can provide to clients and generate another revenue stream for yourself and your business. Make sure you check out that video. If you haven't done so yet, also make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. Until next time, keep crushing it and I'll see you in the next video.